Good morning, church. Good morning, Good morning uh, Facebook. We're having Sunday school now, the uh, 28th day of January. Can you imagine one month, a couple days, and it's gone? Boy, time goes by. Time goes by. You know, things that we were supposed to do last year. Have did some things you're going to do last year and you didn't get done? Oh, yeah. Sure. All of us. All of us. Something. But, you know, uh, then we said, well, the year's gone. It didn't finish. I'm going to get it done. You know what? Here, another month's gone. We haven't done it yet. <laughs> That's it. It's called procrastination. You have the lifestyle that says this. Why do today what you can leave for tomorrow? <laughs> That's it. That's terrible. You know what? People that usually live that way don't amount to much. I'm, I'm not mad at you or anything. I'm just telling you things don't usually work out so well. There's some people I know that they're, they're always right there. Boy, they're, they're hit, they come early. They don't come late. Uh, they, they, they get it in two days ahead of time instead of a month late. Huh? Wh wh which side of the fence are you on on that stuff? There's a, there's a secret to success. And uh, seems to me a lot of people don't succeed on purpose. <laughs> they work at not succeeding <laughs> many different ways. Anyway, 28th chapter of Acts. I'm not mad at anybody. I'm just trying to help you. Let's close. It must be pretty. It's the closing. It's the end of the letter. And uh, it's always important. The end of the letter is always important. So let's let's look at it as we close out the book of Acts. It, uh, it starts out in the uh, 20th chapter of Acts. And when uh, they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Mylida. Uh, now they, their boat had crashed. You remember that in, in chapter 27 if you read it. If you read Acts every day like I do, you'd, you'd have seen the boat crash yesterday. And they, uh, Paul had warned them that it wasn't going to be a good voyage and it could be to their hurt, but God spared them. And they, they, they all made shore. Some on pieces of boat and some swam and then uh, uh, all of that. So, uh, so here they were. They, they got safe to shore. Uh and uh, and the barbarous people showed us no little kindness. It means they were when it says it showed us no little kindness, it means showed them great kindness. They were good to them. You know, you know the tr truth of the matter is, uh, you know, Billy Joe. Uh, truth of the matter is, a lot of times, heathen folks, I mean unsafe folks, are nicer to me than safe folks. Yeah, Isn't that something. Why on earth? I mean, Paul was an out-and-out -out Christian. I mean, he they knew. I mean, from the first moment you met him, you know what he's all about. He never held back an inch about anything. I mean, uh, he, he he let it be known where he was. Uh, if they put you in jail or whatever, didn't matter, and they finally killed him and, and on and on. He just he's going to be a Christian, you know. That's, that's what real, we're, we're going to talk about that today and, in church, as we have our reading uh, in, the, in the New Testament, is Matthew 19, verses 16 to 30. And we're going to talk about that, what, what Christianity is really all about. Now, a lot of people, people here in Sunday school today, and people come to church today, and people out there in faith, they don't really understand what really Christianity is about. you got a whole false concept of what Christianity is. You ain't got a clue what it is to be a Christian. This ain't no little uh, Mickey Mouse game. 
Christianity is not a part-time in, in, in endeavor. I doubt most people's Christianity. I mean, I mean, people that call themselves Christians. As I get older and as I study the Bible more and, and, and as I see the complacency and the indifference and the matter-of-factness and the lack of seriousness of a so-called commitment in Christ, I'd say it's no commitment at all. We're going to talk about that in church today. But, but let's finish out the book of Acts here in, in chapter 28. And it says, uh, And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received uh, us, everyone. Took them all in, made a fire for them. they just been shipwrecked. I mean, they should have all died, but God spared them and uh, brought them into some barbarous people. He, uh, he dumped them on a heathen island. He didn't dump them on a Christian island. He could have. He could have had Christians come and meet him. But he had heathens come and make a fire for them and treat them good and treat them better. I've, uh, listen, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, man, I hate to say this. It's sad to say. But in all my years of Christianity, since April 4th, 1969, yes, I have some good Christian friends. And, uh, and uh, they've treated me good over the years. But yet I've had other Christians, I believe they're Christians, they really haven't treated me very well, haven't really done much for me. And actually, uh, unsaved people uh, have been better uh, and been kinder and better to me than saved people. I, I don't know about you, but that's been, that's been my history. And I've been in the ministry all these years, and I've been out and out for Christ. And, and uh, uh, you would think Christians would be, would be glad, to, glad to help you. I tell you what, bro, let, let me tell you something, Bill Joe. Johnny Pruitt. Johnny Pruitt has always been faithful to this preacher. When uh, when other preachers were putting me out, Johnny was taking me in. And I'm not people putting me out in big big space. Johnny had little spaces as you come in. He shared his office with me. I used his office. And. Uh, Johnny, Johnny Pruitt's a real Christian. Yeah. Yeah. His stand for Christians. Yeah. Now, I've seen a lot of Christians and so-called Christians take great advantage of Johnny Pruitt. They have. I've seen it. I, I've known him all these years. But he's a, he's a, he, a, he, he's a real friend. And, and at times uh, when Christians... Uh, uh, the unsaved to take in and build a fire for you, amen, like they did for these shipwrecked people. Now, they weren't all saved that were on the shipwreck. There, was, there were heathens there, too, that were on the ship that crashed, you know. So it, 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 it wasn't an all uh, a Christian deal. Uh, hi, Sharon. Doris not doing so good? What's that? Doris not doing so good? Oh, well, tell her we miss her today. Thanks for bringing the stuff. I appreciate it. Right, tell, tell her we're praying for her. Sorry we're going to miss her today. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks, so here goes Paul. Uh, he wasn't a big shot. He'd pick up sticks to make the fire. Let me just say this. Christians ought to be lazy. I don't think God likes lazy Christians. Paul was, a, 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 Paul was not a big shot Christian. And Paul had gathered a, a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire. There came out a viper out of the, out of the heat. A snake. The snake didn't want to go in that fire, and he was in them sticks, you know, and he, he threw it in a, threw in the sticks in the fire and fastened on his hand. Can you imagine? Can you imagine an old viper, poisonous snake? Bit on him. Wow. Bit on him. And the truth of the matter is, uh, these people, 
they knew what snakes would kill you when they bite you. And they knew there was a snake that bit him that would kill him quick. I mean, there's different kind of venom in snakes. You know, I don't know. Some might hear no. I don't like snakes at all. I have no use for snakes. Uh, and some of you uh, animal lovers that love snakes, I don't know. For me, only good snake is a dead snake. Although, I don't kill the black snakes. I like them. They eat the bugs and stuff. And, and uh, I've got them. Uh, uh, they come in my yard and stuff. And I don't I don't bother them. And, and I know the difference. But uh, uh, like my, uh, like my son-in-law, uh, Scott, it's his birthday today. It's Scott's birthday today. My preacher's son-in-law. And happy How birthday, Scott. Now? How old is he? I don't know. I don't know. Huh? How would you keep track of all your kids? Grandkids? I got grandkids. I got great grandkids. <laughs> we had a special meal for them yesterday. There's 12 relatives there and, and uh, kids, grandkids, and great grandkids. But uh, thank God for a preacher. And, uh, I got to preach a son in law because I prayed for him. But it's his birthday today. And they, they were over, they, they, they used to live. Um, Used to live in Daytona Beach. They live in Port Orange now. First house they lived in in, in, in Daytona Beach, uh, there was a, a, a snake that uh, got in their house, and it, it come out of a, a wall outlet, and uh, it was uh, is a coral snake, a poisonous coral snake. You know, there's them other snakes that look like them. But you can tell the difference. I think that, what did it say? Black on yellow, deadly fellow. Is that the way it goes on a coral snake? Huh? Black on yellow, deadly fellow? Huh? Wait a minute, no. You got me all confused. Black on yellow, deadly fellow? No. Huh? Red on yellow. Red on yellow, deadly fellow. Did, did, did I say that the first time or didn't I? I don't know. But anyway, they had one that wasn't a non poisonous, it's poisonous. And their, and their neighbor, he was a real tree hugger, environmentalist. Probably wouldn't kill a cockroach, I don't know. How many of you kill a cockroach? Better. I wouldn't want to go to your house if you wouldn't kill a cockroach. <laughs> but <laughs> Billy Joe got a house he rented out full of cockroaches. They got killed. A lot of times people rent your house, rent your place, and leave it full of cockroaches. They, they, they must have been uh, animal lovers. They must have been bug lovers, huh? <laughs> I don't know. Cockroaches. But anyway, the guy next door, he captured it. He says, oh, he says, I'm going to take it far away and it won't come back. That same snake come back and was in their living room again. You say, how did it get back? I don't know. Evidently, he didn't take it far enough. But I know one thing. My son-in-law, when he come back, he didn't. Uh, he didn't take. He didn't call a neighbor to take it on a joyride. He chopped that sucker up into fifty pieces. <laughs> he just. <laughs> he took a shovel and and made sure it, that them pieces were wiggling around for a little bit. Poisonous snakes. I don't know what kind of snake it was. But it was deadly, and it grabbed on the, it grabbed on the, Paul's hand, and and here's what they said. And when Paul uh, had gathered the sticks, a viper, and when the, when the barbarians, that's unsaved people, uh, saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, "No doubt this man is a murderer." 
whom through he had escaped the sea, yet vengeance, uh, it says, uh, escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth uh, not to live. And he shook off the beast under the fire and felt no harm. Howbeit they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly, but after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their mind and said he was a god. Here, first he was a devil, now he was a god. Well, well, God sure did spare him because that was a venomous snake, and, and he should have died, but God. Now remember, God performs miracles, healing miracles. That's a, that's a wonderful miracle of God. He does it not all the time. Uh, uh, Paul wasn't in the, in the healing business, although God did heal through Paul as, as he preached, and of course he protected him there, and, uh, and they did. But, you know, uh, there's a lot of hustlers, and there's a lot of charlatans, there's a lot of money grabbers that are, uh, 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 that are fakers. I just seen, did you see, uh, uh, they're making a big deal. Uh, they're going after all these uh, powerful people in Hollywood, and and uh, they just got that billionaire now from uh, uh, Las Vegas owns a bunch of gambling halls there. And what's his name? Who who they just had on the t TV here the last couple of days? Uh, they got well, all them guys. They're womanizers. They use their power, and uh, someone come out on him and. Uh, his stock went down 10%, I guess, yesterday or the day before. But he was uh, 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 some some uh, some young woman uh, come in and uh, blew the whistle on him, and I guess he had some evidence against him because uh, he's in trouble like that Hollywood guy. What, what was that Hollywood producer's name? What's his name? What do you remember? Big name Hollywood producer. Been been womanizing uh, young women for years, and uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, in Hollywood, uh, for years since since Hollywood ever started, they talk about the casting couch. You know what the casting couch is all about? Yeah, you got a brain. Just think about it for a minute. And uh, but they've been doing that for years. I can't think of the guy's name. Harvey Weinstein. Weinstein. Harvey Weinstein. Billionaire, womanizer, and all these people say, "Oh, they just—they never knew that." <laughs> you know, Bill Cosby done it for years. Hundreds of women. What about all them that didn't say anything, but they got all them coming out now? Now, now this, you see, um, Weinstein was uh, Hillary's good friend. You know, gave Hillary a lot of money. And then she comes out and says, that's terrible. Hillary says she's for women. That's what Hillary Clinton says. She's for women and she's for protecting women and all that. Well, get the, the, the reason I thought about this, because they said, I heard on the radio when I was coming over here this morning, it said that, that this guy that worked for her in her campaign in 2008 was a womanizer and a woman, because all these women are coming out now that, uh, that shun their advances, you know. Well, this woman shunned the advances and, and, and told others in Hillary's campaign, the leaders of the campaign, uh, told Hillary that they should fire him because he's a womanizer. I mean, for one that come forward that wasn't going to uh, uh, surrender to him, you probably had a hundred others that did surrender to him, you know, because of the pressure and money and all of that. It happens all the time. And, but the reason I said all that is to say this. I just heard it this morning. It said that, that he was, for the campaign, he was a spiritual advisor. Now, I wondered, I wonder what he was. They had it on the radio this morning. It said he was a faith healer. Hillary Clinton had a faith healer. I don't know. He must have been, he must have been buddies with Bill, huh? <laughs> 
They probably, they probably maybe shaved the same harem. I don't know. He said, how dare you? That's, I mean, I'm telling you, that's what Bill Clinton was. Nicest guy in the world. If Bill Clinton come in here today and spend a half hour with us, we'd all love him say he's the nicest guy in the world. He was a nice guy. But he's one of the biggest womanizers that's ever walked on two legs. I mean, he abused his power uh, as governor and as president and so on. And even to this very day, even to this very day, uh, there are uh, a lot of stories. You don't have to search for stories much about him. But, but, but here you got Hillary that was real good friends with Weinstein. And when her own people in, in her... Uh, in that campaign in 2008 that, you know, she lost in 2008 and she lost in 2016, both. She tried to run again. She, she won't ever quit. But in 2008, the leaders in her campaign said, fire the guy. They must have had the goods on him. It wasn't just no little girl uh, trying to get money out of him. He, did, he, he wouldn't fire him. Uh, she wouldn't. And now she's a, a big thing. But, I mean, I'm just saying, uh, uh, let's get back to the snake. There's some people, they pass snakes around today. Churches. I ain't gonna bring, don't bring no, don't bring no rattlesnake in here for me to pass around. I think you're tempting God if you'd pass around a snake. I wouldn't do that. Well, let's get back to our, uh, let's get back to our, 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 our chapter here. And it says, um, uh, and he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Howbeit they looked when he should have fallen and fallen, but they called him a god. Verse 7. In the same quarters were uh, uh, possessions of the chief man of the island, whose name was Publius, who received us and lodged us three days courteously so here he was again not only did he build a fire for him he lodged them he put a roof over their head and 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 he was kind to him and of course they got a little different opinion now of paul didn't they got a different opinion now they now they think he's a god <laughs> at first they thought he was being punished because he's a murderer and you know even heathen people even barbarians Know that there's a punishment system of God, that, that uh, there's punishment for doing evil, and there's good rewards for doing good. Even, even unsaved people understand that, you know? I mean, they do. So it says here, And it came to pass uh, that the father of Publius, this is the guy that was taking care of Paul and his people, uh, being very kind to them, unsaved people were taking care of the saved, lay sick of a fever, and of a bloody flux, to, to whom Paul entered in and prayed, and laid his hands on him and healed him. So when this was done, others also, which had diseases in the island, came and were healed. So Paul was healing sick people here. Now remember this, the only reason he was healing people was to bring glory to God and the point towards Jesus Christ, that's the only reason we ever have healing is to point to Christ. It's never to point to the evangelist or to the Benny Hen or to the Oral Roberts uh, or to the you name your faith healer uh, that uh, is uh, making millions off it today. It said, uh, who also honored us with many honors, and when we departed, uh, related with such things as, oh, let me just read. So when this was done, others also, uh, which had diseases in the island, came and were healed. So he was healing and he was preaching the gospel. Always God heals so the gospel can be preached. The big deal isn't the healing because you're going to die anyway. Everybody's going to die. It's the point on a man wants to die and end the judgment. So you can be healed. I was healed of cancer eight years ago. I've had others. I've prayed for people. They've been healed. You might have been healed. But you're going to die. I'm going to die. Healing is temporary. Okay? These faith healers, they say that all you have to do is have faith and you'll be healed every time. Why, are, why, why did they die? Huh? Why don't you see them around that's 
200 years old, huh? You don't see them, do you? They died because the wages of sin is death, and any healing that God does perform is temporary just to bring glory to his name. Uh, who also honored us with many honors, and when we departed, uh, they laded us with such things as were necessary. So they brought them the gospel. They seen some saved. And I'm sure that many of these doesn't go into detail, but I'm sure Publius's father got saved and others that were saved. And they gave him a bunch of stuff to go away with. Uh, and after three months, we departed in a ship of Alexandria, which had wintered in this isle, whose sign was Castor and Pollux. And launched and landing at Syracuse, we tarried there three days. And from thence, we fetched a compass and came from Refgum. And after one day, the south wind blew and we came the next day to Petulai, where we found brethren, Christians. It's always good to find brethren. It's always good. I, wherever I go, I love to find other Christians. I, I find churches. I find people. Uh, Gregory, you want to open that door for the fellow right behind you there? Please, thank you. Uh, where we found brethren and were desired to tarry with them seven days, and so we went uh, toward Rome, headed to Rome, stopped with the brothers of Christ, brothers and sisters in Christ. And from thence, where the brethren heard of us, they came to meet us as far away as Appii Forum, and the three uh, taverns, uh, who when Paul saw, he thanked God and took courage. And when we came to Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners, that was Paul was a prisoner, uh, of the guard. But Paul was suffered to dwell by himself uh, with the soldier that kept him. So Paul wasn't put in the jail. God gave him special grace there so that, so that he could preach the gospel. Verse number 17. We're in uh, Acts 28, verse 17. And it came to pass... That after three days, Paul called the chief of the Jews together. And when they were come together, he said unto them, Men and brethren, though I have committed nothing against the people or customs of our fathers, yet was I delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hand of the Romans, who when they had examined me, would have let me go because there was no cause of death in me. But when the Jews spake against it, so did you see the Jews always hated Jesus, and they, they hated the gospel, and as they do today. Uh, Jews hate the gospel today, as they have over all these years. Uh, they've hated the gospel. Now, some Jews get saved, but most don't. That's the way it's been. That's the way it is. And, it, and, and it'll be that way until 144,000 Jewish evangelists go all over the world and witness for Jesus Christ. Uh, that's at the end time. We'll be gone out of that. We that are saved, the rapture will occur before then. But when the Jews uh, spake against it, I was constrained to appeal to Caesar. Not that I had ought to accuse my nation of. That was, uh, Paul was a Jew, but he's a saved Jew. For this cause, therefore, have I called for you to see you and to speak with you, because that for the hope of Israel I am bound with these chains. And they said unto him, We neither received letters out of Judea concerning thee, neither any of the brethren that came showed or spake any harm of thee, but we desire to hear of thee what thou thinkest. For as concerning this sect, we know that everywhere it is spoken against. See, Christians always been spoken against. I'm spoken against here in Daytona Beach. I was spoken against in Milwaukee. Christians are always spoken against. Don't ever forget that. I don't care where they go. You can go anywhere in the face of this earth. Christianity will be spoken against by the governments and by the general people. When you've got a fake Christianity that the government is upholding, and everybody's praising and they're bowing down to, it's a fake Christianity. Real Christianity is always pros is always persecuted and is always spoken against. Don't forget that. They say, well, you ain't, uh, you ain't got no sway with anybody, preacher. 
I got sway with God, amen. <laughs> you get saved, you'll have some sway with God too. Forsake the world. Let God be true and every man a liar. Amen. I said, let God be true and every man a liar. Yeah, you listen to men. You say, whoa, 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 whoa. like I said, woman at the barbershop owns that barbershop. I get a haircut at my, my barber's a Christian. He got saved. Someone come here to let him to Christ in Cincinnati where he owned the barbershop. He got saved. She's all against God. Ain't no God. Ain't no hell. Ain't no heaven. Ain't no anything in there. I mean, that's just, you stand strong for Christ. That's what you get. When they appointed him a day, there came many of uh, to him into his lodging to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning, he had his own house. He had a guard there with him. Didn't have to go to jail. And people were coming there with him. For two years they came to him and he got to testify and do God's work, you see. Yeah. And it says in verse 24, and some uh, believed and some of the things, some believed the things which were spoken and some believed not. Just like right here. Just like right here. We got people. Some you believe, some some won't. Yeah. Those that believe go to heaven. Those that won't, you go to hell. Yeah. I care about you. Yeah. I'm glad you're here. I love you. I'll treat you nice. I'll feed you, give you coffee. Yeah. I'll try to be kind to you, which I believe I ought to. But if you don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and get saved, you're going to hell. Yeah. Sometimes, a lot of times, people be coming to church so long, and some of the uh, Christians in the church are sometimes a preacher. They get so used to them coming. They just kind of forget about him. But here they are in the church, lost as Hogan's goat, going to hell. I, I, every day I encourage people to get saved. There's not a day goes by that I don't encourage uh, uh, the born-again experience. Yeah. And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed. After Paul had spoken one word. Well spake the Holy Ghost by Isaiah the prophet unto our fathers. Here's, here's Paul, of course, quoting Isaiah, Old Testament prophet, saying, Go unto the people and say, Hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand. That's a lost person. And seeing ye shall see and not perceive. For the heart of this people is waxed gross. That ain't good. Gross ain't good. And their ears... We're dull over here. Like some are sitting here. You can't. You ain't getting it. You love your sin. You say, man, I can't wait to get this over with. Get that good meal. Get that good chicken dinner and get out of here and go out there and live for my daddy the devil again. That's sad. People come in here all the time like that. <laughs> you know what I say? <laughs> if that's what you want. If you want to go to hell, I guess you're going to go to hell. You want to choose Christ? You can choose him. You want to rebel against them as you have been in your lostness? Continue on. The fires of hell will be at the other end of that journey. And their eyes have been closed. That's you that aren't saved. Least they shall see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart. You got to understand with your heart. You hear what you see with your eyes. You hear with your ears. You see the miracles of God. You hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it says, and, and, then, and then you understand with your hearts. But if you've got a hard heart and you won't listen and understand, you go to hell. That's the way it is. And should be converted. That's saved. That's born again. Amen. Converted. Yes. And I shall heal them. Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles. And they will hear it. This is what Paul, t at, the, at the, book of, the book of Acts, the end of the book of Acts, this great letter, the book of Acts, he says, you Jews, you hard-headed Jews that crucified Jesus, you won't understand, you'll go to hell. Amen. You don't want the gospel, uh, the, 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 the bloodline of Jesus Christ, that Je uh, Jesus uh, was of the Jews and salvation is of the Jews, but if you don't want it, we'll go to the Gentiles. That's all the other people in the world. And they will understand and they will believe. That's why there's tons of more Gentiles or other. If, if you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. So said so the gospel goes to the Gentile. And the majority of people who get saved are Gentiles, are other, other people, not the Jews. 
And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house and received all that came unto him. See, the, the gospel's for all. That's why all kinds of people come in here. I got all kinds of some kind. Some come in here, don't care a thing about the gospel. Some in here are smart Alex and uh, wise acres, and and uh, they they've got it. They've got a, a, a lingo coming. I mean, if I let the smart Eric, small Eric, smart Alex and wise acres take over, they come in here. This place would be a mess. We do things decently in order here. We eat over there. We have church over here. Amen. Yeah. We come in, we stay, and we don't have people wandering around out in the lot smoking and carrying on and everything. You want to come in and get coffee and donuts? You're in for the service. That's it. Now, I'll, I will give you 15 minutes in three minutes from now, from quarter to 10 till 10 o'clock. You can go outside and get a breath of fresh air. But I tell you what, you ain't getting no breath of fresh air if you're sucking on a lousy cancer stick. Shame on you. I'm trying to save your life. I'm trying to save your soul and your life from cancer. Lung cancer, throat cancer, tongue cancer. Read the pack you smoke out of. It's dangerous to your health. It's no good. Verse 31, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbid. Boy, when God's for you, who can be against you? You can preach that gospel. You can even be in jail and, 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 and God to put a, God to put a uh, work it so the system who he, the, God works through authority. But God had them rulers to have a guard, watch him in his private home. Preached for two years there. Got a lot of people saved. Some believed, some didn't. That's just the way it was. So we're going to have church in a minute. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and I shall be saved. We're going to have a great message today. I believe it's a great message, not because I'm teaching it, but it's coming from the Word of God. Amen. But it's going to be in the 19th chapter of Matthew, verses 16 to 30. It's going to tell about a real Christian. Facebook, you better tune back in and get a hold of someone. Have them tune back in. Listen to it. Get someone in on it. About what a real Christian is. Let me say this. Most people that think they're Christians aren't Christians. Uh, let me say it again. I meant it. Most people that think they're Christians aren't Christians. Let's examine it in Matthew chapter 19, verses 16 through 30. It's quarter two. We'll start church here at 10 o'clock, and, and Facebook will be preaching about 20 after. Uh, maybe a little bit earlier than that. Uh, maybe earlier than that. But Billy Joe's going to play some songs, and we're going to be preaching. Have a great time. Bye-bye, Facebook. See you in a little bit.